Brands that sell and market to consumers work very hard to ensure that their customers feel loved. Everything from their websites to the way their staff interact with customers to their mobile apps, these brands put in the effort to make sure that the experience is what customers want and is what customers expect. Hello, I'm Colin Hung with Sway Health, where we explore the latest trends and topics in healthcare marketing. I was recently at the X4 conference, which is hosted by Qualtrics, a company that makes a technology platform that enables organizations and brands in particular to deliver superior customer experiences. The chief medical officer at Qualtrics is Dr. Adrian Boise, one of my favorite people to interview and speak with. She is just so passionate and so knowledgeable when it comes to patient experience. I always walk away from my interactions feeling a little bit smarter and a lot more excited about this space. I sat down with Dr. Boise at X4 because I wanted to ask her a very key question. At X4, it was all talk about brands loving their customers. But I asked her, are we in healthcare ready to love our patients as much as brands love their customers? I was very surprised at her thoughtful response. Here it is. Well, welcome back to the program. Always yes. so excited to have you. You're one of my favorite people to interview. Oh, you're just charming. No, I think I, you said that last time. It's, too. it's the truth. You and I always have some amazing conversations. I love kind of the areas that we explore. I'm actually That's excited right. to ask you this question. So we're here, obviously, at the X4 Qualtrics Conference, which has been fantastic. Mm. And I really encouraged to see the focus on healthcare. Yeah. But one of the questions that we went and discussed offline was, is healthcare ready to love patients as much as brands love their customers? Yeah. Are, are we there? No. <laughs> okay. That's a super, you, you tossed me a softball, which is great. No, I, I mean, to be very clear, I, I think the answer is no, and certainly not at scale, right? We still rely on individual heroes, nurses, clinicians, medical assistants, service representatives, access, people who wanna do their best and show up as their whole selves and are really trying to create connection. And yet what I'm hoping for to see more of at scale is to represent that patient experience, the experience people have, has to get baked into how we operate at the contact center, how we operate in the billing experience. And so our processes and systems change more. Think about it, you know, we still tolerate new patient appointment and three months from now or left without being seen rates that hover around 10%. Mm -hmm. There are lots of operational examples that I think tell a pretty clear story that, no, if we loved on people, we would solve and tackle these really hard problems. People are trying, but I'd really love to see us call our shot, as you heard Ryan Smith talk about on the main stage call our experience shot. What are we not willing to tolerate? What are we going to what hill are we gonna die on to say we must deliver on this for patients because it's an imperative? So not there yet. And and you it was interesting you're saying that right now it's reliant on individual heroes yeah. to 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 be A the champion or B just to do it. Yeah. Are you seeing more uh, heroes, more champions now pushing this a bit more forward? Yeah. Great question in the sense that I feel like I've had my own journey with beginning to love more on my patients and think about how I could love differently on them. If I can't control everything, how could I grab my locus of control and scribble a love note on their after visit summary when I see them in clinic? How could I send them a birthday card because I figured out how to engineer remembering their birthday in the electronic health record? How could I just grab the moments that I can grab and make them more humane? Uh, and I think it's risky counting on low staffing, depleted caregivers to just keep showing up as mm. those heroes. So what I'm encouraged about is starting to see operators, chief financial officers, chief operating officers, thinking about how do I engineer a better experience at, regarding access or the call center and rev cycle or finance which actually turn out to be some of the biggest pain points that patients have been talking about for a very long time. And that actually gets me really jazzed up that we're not narrowly defining what experience can be. That's, 
that's really exciting and soul filling stuff. Well, you're right. Actually, you know, when we talk about patient experience, we often think about the visit, yeah. uh, or and certainly that's the center. Yeah. But there's all this stuff that happens before and after, yeah. where uh, companies like Qualtrics and, and others can really make a big difference in terms of making an appointment, how easy it is to navigate that website, yeah. and then on the financial side, uh, as you mentioned, the financial experience of bill payment and understanding your bills and all of those are areas that are, are ripe for some improvement that don't have to burden an already overburdened clinician or nurse. That's right, and think about what we said, we have to disrupt ourselves, right? It was the Ed Bastian Delta CEO mm -hmm. example of, why does Wi-Fi on airplanes suck so much? <laughs> and he, right, called his shot that he's right. gonna eliminate charges for Wi-Fi, first airline to do that, and now one of the world's most admired brands, like just right. recently. So, he, he made a tough decision that probably cost a lot of money and yet understood that people want to be connected. And when we erect or tolerate barriers to that connection, even within our brands or our hospital systems, it's a no win. And, and so I really appreciated the leadership there. I think it takes some bravery. Uh, to your point, you know, we did some research. I did some research a couple of years ago on unstructured data, looking mm -hmm. at all the unstructured data from patients over the course of a year. And it turns out access billing and all the delays in between are the pain points that they're talking about, not that we're asking about mm. the ones they're talking about. And we should be asking ourselves some tough questions right now. If we have traditional, if we define patient experience still as CAP surveys with a 20% return rate from college educated white people over the age of 65, that's a very narrow listening strategy. For sure. So much more whole, I, I love to see organizations think about much more holistic listening, the connect between PX and EX. And to your point, making sure that we're beginning to listen at places we haven't historically listened to call access, delays, uh, billing, as part of a holistic picture around experience. Because the patients don't divide it up by the way our infrastructure is structured, right? Like That's they don't true. know there's a PX office and then there's a marketing office. It's a singular experience for them. So let's flip the script. I wanna go back to something you, you talked about and it reminded me of your opening, uh, your opening keynote, um, just around the use of un this unstructured data. Yeah. And you were talking about how we might be able to use that actually to identify social determinants yeah. and, and social economic issues without having someone answer the questionnaire yes. and, and, or answer some awkward questions from the clinician yeah. on this. Talk to me a little bit more about that. Yeah, well, it's just, you begin thinking about the possibilities here to listen in respectful ways, right? I'm a trained ethicist, not practicing ethicist, but I think about how to do this thoughtfully because we don't want to be listening in ways that that disrespect the autonomy and privacy of our patients and people. And I, I think patients are, are beginning to get clearer and louder around, I've already told you, mm -hmm. you should know everything you need to know about me to better anticipate and show up for me. And in fact, are getting less patient, right? patients shouldn't have to be patient, uh, about our inability to do that. Fill out one more form, here's the clipboard, what's your address? Like, really? Right. Uh, and so I think social determinants is a really interesting example. Uh, why do we need a form or a questionnaire to understand that when I know most of the socioeconomic factors that go into that equation uh, and could listen differently to your unstructured data? I should already know that. And we should be, imagine what we could create if we were reaching out through the right channel right. with the right person, trusted community, right? Uh, member or someone they trust to say, hey, here's some resources or hey, uh, I'm wondering if this is a struggle or hey, we noticed. Right. And so I think being really thoughtful and, and anticipating needs rather than having to ask about them, you know, the days of one more survey, I think they're over. We need to listen to what we have, uh, and that boy is that exciting! Like the possibilities yeah, well, are 
so cool there. It is, and you just said it. I mean, the data is out there. I mean, some of it, you know, we may have to pay for it, like through a, a financial uh, a company like Alexis Nexus to get that social, mm -hmm. uh, the economic data. Mm -hmm. But there's plenty of other data that abounds, like even in your own finance department, just in terms of their payment patterns yes. or their lack of payment patterns. Yes. That can give you a clue as to what might be going on and, and maybe approach that patient a little differently. Yeah, and we studied, right? I mean. Mm -hmm. In my prior life, we spent some time studying why people don't pay their bill. And it's not because they, you know, we assume they need more education or they don't have the money. And the answer is no, actually, they don't trust the bill that they get. Right. They don't know whether it's gone to insurance or the lingo on the bill or they're going to just wait longer and see what happens. Right. <laughs> and so it's, it's fascinating when you really dig in to how our processes and systems are making people feel. And as I mentioned in the keynote, right, it, these things aren't just nice or cute or soft or huggy. It's about, emo we know from decades of research that emotions drive learning, attention, behavior, choices that for healthcare are critically important. Mm -hmm. We have to be able to drive better choices for better health, which is the ultimate outcome. What's next for you and Qualtrics here in this space? Well, I think I'm really interested in some of the ideas I talked about a, around a humane experience, right? This notion of everybody's talking about the human experience. Well, everybody can have a human experience. I mean, come on, like we're humans. <laughs> <laughs> we are yep, humans. Yep, yep. It's not really revolutionary. To me, what feels revolutionary and exciting is thinking about how do we create humane experiences that people will remember forever that go home talking about. Mm -hmm. I shared the one that I had had around being in a situation where I had to tell a grandmother that she, who had lost her vision, that uh, it was never gonna return. And just the notion that I walked out of the, it was very emotional. She was talking about, I'm sure you recall, she right. was talking about- Grandchildren. And yeah, her grandchildren and, and seeing her children's faces and, and we cry together. And then I walk out and go to start teaching the residents about what this all means for them and how they could better break bad news and what feedback did they have for me. And a colleague just comes up and says, you know, Adrian, I, I heard what went on there. That was incredibly difficult. Are you okay? And I had never been asked in my entire career, like had never been asked in my entire career how it feels to give news like that all the time. My point is only to say humane experiences are the ones powerfully emotional unexpected and delivering on the senses, mm. right? So whether it's the touch of an arm, whether it's a digital touch, whether it's the feeling of a thank you note in your hands, right. how could we get better at engineering almost everything we do thinking about those three elements? Because then your brain will be telling that story locked in as a memory for you, hopefully a good one uh, for a very long time. So that uh, is pretty exciting to me in the future. I think also baking ROI in. You know, mm -hmm. we're still sometimes relegated to, to fluffy land when people talk about experience or defining it by CAPS performance. And I really want us to recognize as we get more chief finance officers, as we get more chief operating officers, every time we should be telling the story around financial, operational, and experiential data. You know, we did research that said Qualtrics can deliver a 601% ROI over three years if people make that investment. Okay. And in a time when there's financial crunch, poor staffing, all the things, people sure. say, oh, I can't do that. No, I, I actually think now is the time. Like if people 600, 601%? If people don't invest now in the humane experience of the customer, whether that's their own people or the patient, competition just might yeah. blow you away. It's, I think the time is right now. It will, going back to what the Delta CEO was saying, like during 9-11 during and during the time of COVID, they doubled down on investing in yeah. this because they knew when they emerged that the world would be different, the competition would be different, and yeah. they had to, they took that opportunity to kind of invest in their customer experience. What I'm hearing is perhaps healthcare needs to do that now. Yeah, I mean, think about that, right? Highly regulated in industry could have let that define what they wanted the in-flight experience to be. 
and chose their own path. Um, and interestingly, the other thing I heard was around letting the experience be the blueprint. Mm. Isn't that interesting? Like instead of shoving it under everything else, quality, safety, experience, operations, it's, it is the blueprint mm. that I love. Man, looks like you have some exciting stuff that's heading <laughs> your way, Adrian. I, well, I sure hope so. It's, it's more exciting to really hear what people are doing in ways I never thought of, right? Like you heard University of Utah use, mm -hmm. you know, designing designing tools in room for differently abled patients to do what they want and give control back to them in an incredibly vulnerable time. Or, you know, Stanford entire executive team really aligning around, we're gonna do this mm -hmm. and we're gonna get it all in one place so we can listen differently. That's actually what kind of fills my bucket is being able to connect and watch uh, almost from the wings. People just drive humane experiences. Uh, it matters. Uh, and I hope we all grab that opportunity by the horns. Can't wait. I also can't wait for the next time we're together again and get you, get you back on the program. This yeah. has been wonderful, as oh, always. Well, thank you for being such a powerful voice advocate uh, expert in this space. I mean, we've been together for a long time. I feel like navigating these stories and conversations and you're such a gift. So oh, well, thank, thank you. you for saying that. I appreciate that. Adrian, appreciate you being on the program again. Yeah, thank you so much, Colin. I want to thank Dr. Boise again for agreeing to be on camera with me at X4 and talking about patient experience. I truly, truly, truly enjoy every time I speak with her and I can't wait for the next time we're together. And hey, if you enjoyed this video, go on over to sway.health. That's sway with two A's dot health. There you'll find a lot more videos and articles and podcasts around topics that are of interest to those of us in healthcare marketing. I'm Colin Hung for Sway Health. Thanks for being here and we'll see you on the next one.